Let's write a function to determine whether or not an item is contained inside a binary search tree. And so what our contains function will take is it'll take a pointer to the root of the tree structure we're looking at and determine if the given item is contained within that structure. So I'll pause for a few seconds to give you a chance to work on this and then we'll talk about it together. All right, the first step, like with any algorithm should be to figure out what the different cases are in the algorithm and to think about this conceptually as a recursively defined data structure before we go ahead and write any code for this. Okay, so we have a binary search tree. We know that it's either empty, and if it's an empty binary search tree, then no matter what we're looking for, it's not going to be contained within that empty structure. So that actually covers one of our base cases. If our tree is empty, then the item is not in the tree. We also have, if our tree is not empty, then we have our root datum. And if the item we're looking for is the same as the root datum, then we found it. And we don't have to look in the rest of the tree. Okay, so that covers another base case, which is, again, if the item is equal to the datum of the root node, then the item is in the tree. If the item isn't equal, and we don't have an empty tree, then the item is either going to be less than the root datum or greater than the root datum. And because of the binary search tree property, we know that if it's less than the root datum, then it can only appear in the left-hand subtree. If the item is greater than our datum, then if it's in the tree, it must be in the right subtree. So what we can do in those two cases is use recursion to check our smaller subtrees. We can take the recursive leap of faith and just assume that because we're giving it a smaller tree, it's going to give us the right answer. And so then if the item is in the left-hand side, if the item is smaller than the datum, the root datum, then we know that that recursive call will tell us whether or not it's in that smaller subtree. And similarly, if the item is greater than the root datum, our recursive application on the right-hand side will give us the correct answer as to whether or not it's in that right subtree. So let's go ahead and now proceed to write this algorithm in code. So. Again, we have our first base case, which is when our tree is empty. In our representation, an empty tree is represented by a null pointer. So if our pointer is null, and here I'm going to use the truth value of the pointer itself, then in that case, there's no way that this tree contains that item because the tree contains nothing. So we can immediately return false here. Okay, our second base case was when the root datum is equal to the item we're looking for. And at this point, we do know that we have a root datum because we've already checked for whether or not the tree is empty. Okay, so we can now compare our root datum to the item we're looking at. And in our representation, it's the datum member variable of this node. And if that's equal to our item, then our item is indeed contained within, within the tree and we can immediately return true. Okay, so those, those two cases are our base cases. The other cases we have are if the item happens to be less than our root datum, or if the item happens to be greater than the root datum. And if it happens to be less, then we need to recursively check on our left subtree. So we'll check to see if our item is less than our root datum. And in that case, it's only going to be in our tree if it's on the, if it is on the left hand side. So we'll return the result of checking whether or not the left hand side contains this item. And in our representation, the left member variable of a node is pointing at the left subtree. And the only remaining case is if the item is greater than the root datum. And in that case, it must be, if it's in the tree, on the right-hand side, in the right-hand subtree. And so all we have to do now is make our recursive call on our right subtree. And that tells us whether or not it's in the complete tree. And that covers all of our cases, both our two base cases and our two recursive cases. Now notice here that even though that there are syntactically two different calls to contains, two different recursive calls, in any particular call to contains, at most one of those recursive calls is made. 
So this function is actually not tree recursive, it's linear recursive. The second thing to notice is that both of these recursive calls are tail calls. No work happens after either of the calls returns. So since all of our recursive calls are tail calls, that means that this function is tail recursive.